Hi everyone. Beginning with version 179, SkyTrack now uses a different methodology to download TLE files for satellite calculations. Uh, TLE stands for Two Line Elements and it's just one of several different types of formats uh, for obtaining orbital elements which again are used to calculate the orbit of the satellite. So SkyTrack uses uh, data from the website celestrack.org and if we go to Celestrack's website, this is the main page for uh, downloading elements. And you can see across the top here, there are different formats of these orbital elements, but SkyTrack uses the TLE format. On this page, we can see there's different categories of satellites, and under each category, there's uh, groups of similar satellites. I have permission from Celestrack to use that uh, their groupings and categories. So you can see here we have a drop down of different categories. So I could select uh, communication, for example, and then it selects all the available uh, groups of satellites under communication. So, for instance, if we wanted to uh, attempt to track uh, old Iridium satellites and look for a, a flare that they're well known for, I could click Iridium group, click download and then SkyTrack downloads the file from Celestrack and there are all my Iridium satellites. So I just have uh, 31 satellites loaded into SkyTrack. So let's go back under special interest and I'm going to do active. So active is going to download all the currently active satellites. So we can see we got over 8,000. So it may not be necessary to do that, depending what you want to look at. Um, for instance, you might be just interested in space stations, so you could download the space station group. And you've only got uh, 25 satellites. Um, it's fine to load all 8,000. SkyTrack's going to handle it well, but then when you go here, um, I'm just going to expand the calculation there for 12 hours so there were no space stations coming through my location in the next two hours so anyway if we downloaded um, all 8,000 we're going to see thousands and thousands of passes here so it may be harder to pick out the ones you want uh, so in that case you may want to select one of these smaller groups uh, like space stations instead of active which are all. So I'm just going to grab that one again. You can see here I got a message uh, when I chose active again it didn't download it because the existing was recent so that just prevents someone from just pounding away on the download and putting uh, using up unnecessary resource on the Celestrack servers. Uh, so something else you can do that's new to this version underneath the satellite tab so when you first install SkyTrack, you won't have this database. You have to download it separately, and it gets updated about once every six months. So what this is, is just a database of uh, a lot of information on the various satellites. So if I click on one here, click on inf information, um, we, we can see uh, who the owner of it is, who, uh, where it originated from, the contractor, when it was launched, its expected lifetime and years. And there's also some internet links that you can get more information on the satellite. But what I can do from this screen now is I can just click on one. So we'll click on that one again. And what I can do now is do a query of Celestrack for TLE information just for that one satellite. So if you're just interested in one, then we're just downloading one. And then we're going to have... Uh, so. So in this, there's nothing, no passes coming up in the next two hours. If I go to past predictions, that's showing me over the next week. And I can see the passes just for that one satellite over the next week. And I'm just going to get the uh, active one again. So I got all 8,000 loaded again. So if I go here and I see many many passes so we got over 2,000 passes in the next two hours with that big file of all satellites uh, 
if I want to narrow that down and, and into a, a group different than uh, what some of these groups are defined as, I can go into satellite information and I can use some of these filters to filter down. So I live in Canada. So let's say I just want to see Canadian owned satellites. So I'd enable that and click apply. And now in this list, it's only showing um, satellites that are Canadian owned. What I can then do is save something I've termed as a TLE filter. And I'll put that on the desktop. Call it Canada. I'm not going to apply it yet. And if we look at that file, all it is is a text file and it has a list of NORAD numbers. So you could, if you know the NORAD numbers of satellites you want to observe, you could just type them in your own uh, text file and use them as a filter. So then on this screen, I'm going to select that filter. And I'm going to apply it. So now my list here, instead of 8,000 satellites, I'm only seeing 52, and I'm only seeing satellites according to that filter, which was, uh, in this case, uh, Canadian-owned satellites. One important note is that when you're doing this, you're not doing a query to Celestrac just for Canadian-owned satellites. We already loaded this active um, TLE file, which has all active files. And then what the filter does is it pulls out of that file just the ones that you've specified. So in this case, just Canadian satellites. So it's not doing a direct query for Canadian satellites. But nevertheless, works well to um, narrow down your search of what you're interested in looking at. Um, so if I go back here, and I'm going to go to Space Stations and download that one. And you can see there's none listed because there's no Canadian Space Station. So if I clear this filter, now I see 25 different space stations. Um, this auto select satellite, if that's enabled, and uh, I put in a NORAD number, so in, that, in this case, that's the NORAD number of International Space Station. What it does is once you uh, load a new satellite file, it'll automatically select this NORAD number in the satellite tracking tab. So you don't have to go search for it. It's, it's already displayed there. One thing to comment on, uh, TLE is an old format for orbital information. It has a limitation, and the limitation is around the NORAD number in that it, it only uh, allows for five digits. NORAD numbers are currently, I believe, around the 70,000 mark. So you can quickly see with a lot of the new satellites being launched that uh, sometime in the near future, uh, they're going to have to exceed five digits. They're going to be uh, greater than 99,999 TLE format isn't going to accommodate that and that's why we see already on the Celeste Track uh, website here these other formats um, for the data and in the near future I'm going to take a look at, uh, at uh, the ability to download these different formats because we'll need to once that NORAD number reaches that mark um, so I think that's all I wanted to show. I hope this, this new method works well for you and is fairly, fairly transparent and easy to get. Um, I really appreciate uh, Celeste Track. They've been around a long time, uh, since 1985. Uh, it is run by Dr. T.S. Kelso, and uh, it's recently changed from a uh, .com website to a .org, so it is a non-profit organization, and uh, if you appreciate it as I do, then uh, I'd ask you to consider making a donation, and that would uh, help keep this website going. Um, so I think that's everything, and uh, again, thank you, and I hope, uh, I hope you enjoy the new update.